Alright, g'day YouTube, this is Matt from the Wicked GQ Patrol channel. Uh, I've got a couple of hard drives here that I pulled out, oh, quite a while ago now, I'd say these hard drives are pulled out of a computer about two years ago. Um, they are two Western Digital 1TB WD10 EARS, what years, if you want to call it, uh, SATA hard drives, or SATA, if you want to, depending on how you pronounce it. Um, these two were in my system, in my server, Runners Raid, and they actually used to run um, Windows operating system on the rated drives um, before solid states were really getting down in price. So, um, yeah, the server ran that for many years, actually, um, until one day I went in there to change something, and I did a nasty. I broke one of them, so if we want to have a look... At the SATA drive here. I'm not sure if that's going to be a good one, but there is the SATA connection there. That's the power connection, and that's actually snapped off, so you can't plug the uh, SATA cable back in there. And these ones here, that's how they originally look if you're not familiar with SATA drives. So we're going to put this one aside because we know that that one is in good condition and we're going to work on this one so the best thing you can do with these drives once they do go or if you do have one go is not to just go and throw it away or send it off for an expensive repair because getting a hard drive repair joint is not cheap so instead you have to go have a look at the pay attention to the brand the model number and then you turn it underneath and I'm not sure if we'll be able to pick that up. And... Oh, boy. Okay. So, underneath this is a serial number and a date code. But more importantly, you'll see one printed on the board there. 2060701640002, revision A. So, what you do is you type in... The brand, the type of hard drive, and then you want to make sure that there's any serial numbers that are on the card, on the PCB card, you want to make sure that that's correct as well before you go mucking around with these things. So I've already gone onto eBay. It came from Italy. I think it cost me like 39 bucks plus shipping. And if we can see there, we'll actually check the numbers now. Um, it's probably best if we do it this way, I'm not sure. But that one's 2060, 2060, 701640. Ugh, I don't think I'll be able to check that with my camera. It's got a 002. I'll just check that myself. 2070 That is correct. So we're going to unwrap this one now and have a bit of a closer look. It is, that, that's the way I pulled it out of the, um, the uh, bubble wrap packaging from, from Italy. Just bear with me here. This is not as easy as it looks to unwrap this. I have to get the trusty old knife or something, I reckon. Let's run this uh, screwdriver around the edges. Now it's always a good idea, really, you should be wearing an anti-static um, strap and earthing yourself or grounding yourself onto a nearby earthed object, but I'm Mr. Lazy here, I can't be bothered, and really it's never really, you know, people say that it's really important, but I've never fried anything from a little static, especially in modern equipment. So, all right. I believe that's, yeah, so that's the hard drive it came from, I believe. So, and this one may have had a faulty platter or something like that. The actual disc was faulty in, inside. See if they put enough tape on this. 
Try not to be too abusive here, you know. Here we go. It's got a bit of foam on the bottom, which doesn't really matter to us. But we've almost got it out, and there we have it. I'm just going to throw that off to the side there. So it looks to me like it's in good condition. I don't see any scratches on the board or anything like that. So I think we're safe enough. There's some chips underneath here. We're safe enough to pull the uh, other board off the other drive and replace it. So let's put that there. And uh, so these screws that are on here, one, two, three, four, they are actually uh, T8 torque screws. I don't have a T8 screwdriver. I looked everywhere for a T8. In fact, hang on. Was that? Nah, it's too big. Uh, a T8 screwdriver. I looked everywhere. I only had a T7 or a T10. So I got a bit naughty with this drive. You do not want to be. This is a bit of a worn, flat bladed screwdriver here. You don't want to be putting. You don't want to be smacking it into the screw. You gently have to work it in like that. And eventually you'll be able to work it in like so until it takes a bit of force and they should start to loosen up like that. So that's one screw. Now, I'd always recommend to get the proper screwdrivers. I'm just lazy and I'll end up losing the screwdriver again. I'm sure I used to have them. But since I moved from one suburb to another, I just can't find some of my tools. Hit that one. This hard drive's been off for a long, long time, so I don't think it would be very susceptible to getting static, you know, or discharges. I haven't powered this drive up for more than two years. Right, so right now that should be, there we go, the sticky pad is starting to come off. And these hard drives are so easy that it just lifts off. You don't actually need to unplug any wiring or fancy duvalackies. It just lifts off like so. And then we grab this one. I'm just going to double check as well that the pads on here look in a reasonable condition I can clean them with a little bit of in fact I might just do that um, just these pad this pad here I don't know if you can see it there's a bit of crap on it so if you look at the middle of this pad here with the pins or where the pins will join onto the board one of them's got a little bit of on there so I might clean that slag off with some cleaner do that now. and I don't like spraying the cleaner onto the actual boards I'm a, bit, I'm a bit against that I'd rather spray it onto a rag and use the clean part of the rag to just gently wipe over the board which achieves very much the same thing. So we're just gonna put that there, get that there, and just wipe the pins there. I'm just hoping that that doesn't cause any issues because it is pretty dirty, that. That's some electro clean on the, um, That's some electric clean. I apologise for the buzzing because I'm using my phone in a special holder to video cord this. Okay, so I've just cleaned all the pins. We now want to grab this foam pad and reattach 
really we're not really reattaching anything what I might do is turn the foam pad around and stick it in in here because that's where it belongs so yeah that's where it belongs there so it's not in the way or it's not going to fall out into the wrong place we grab our board and gently lower this board back into place like that and then we grab our screws and um, put our screws in this might be a little harder because I'm not using the correct screwdriver I won't tighten that screw down yet because I want to put all of the screws and make sure everything's lined up so I'll just do it, just, you know, just get the thread started on the screws. Because as you can see there, it's got a bit of movement in that without all the screws in place. So it's better to get all the screws in. That way it's lined up a little better. Because if you put one in really tight and it's misaligned, then you're going to have all sorts of problems getting the other screws back in. This screw is not having fun. It's uh, just not wanting to start. There we go. Did that start, or is it going in a bit crooked? Again, it would help if I had the right size screwdriver on hand. I'm just trying to get this thread started. What I might do is just start on it. Oh no. No, it doesn't want to go in. Okay, well, we'll try and put this one here. Sometimes these screws just want to be aligned in specific slots before they'll go in. There we go, that's another one. And we have one more screw over here. This one's a stubborn one. Oh, here we go. I think the thread's in there. So we just, uh, we'll get the middle one in first. A bit like an engine head. The middle one. And one. They don't need to be stupidly tight. They just need to be nice and tight. Be careful you don't slip when you're using a standard screwdriver if you decide to do my trick. And there we have it. That's all back together and repaired. So I should be able to now plug that back into my machine and boot that up on RAID. And here's the other one. Okay, so I now have the hard drive plugged into my USB dock. I haven't turned it on yet, and I've uh, gotten into Windows here to uh, see if the hard drive is going to recognize. Uh, I'm not fussed of what is on the hard drive because I did have a full backup of the hard drive years ago, and I already took everything off. So I just want to see whether or not this hard drive will actually format uh, as a standard one terabyte drive before I go you know removing covers off a machine or doing a build with it um so let's do that now um so we're plugged in we'll just switch it on at the back and we should have windows activate we've got lights coming on up on the front here there we go it has detected it sounds like it has detected the drive. So to ch check on whether or not it's detected the drive, we will go into our Cortana at the bottom of our Windows 10 screen and type in disk management. And that will say here, over here, create and format disk partitions. So it, we can click on that. 
And if we scroll down on this list of drives, we do have, here we go, disk 4 is online 936.51 gigabytes with unallocated space. And the reason why Windows may be detecting that it's unallocated is because when it was originally formatted, it was formatted as a RAID. And for those who don't know, RAID means that you are basically splitting the data between two drives. There's many different types of RAID, but this one, it was splitting the data to, between two of the drives. And with that, it gains an extra maybe 70% uh, speed. Some will say double the speed, but it is not quite double the speed. You can set RAIDs uh, to back up each, each drive. So you basically get a mirror image. There's many different types of RAIDs and this is not really the time to go through every one of them. So since we don't care what this hard drive becomes because it is a rated disk, uh, we can actually come, click on here, go new simple volume and click on next and we'll do a format uh, to NTFS which is the standard these days for, for everything and we will do a format. I'm going to perform a slow format that will hopefully make sure that everything's hunky-dory. If I hear any weird noises, I'll know that something is very wrong. It doesn't even tell me whether or not it's, you know, how many percent through that this format is. It just, you can see that very bright blue flashing light that's formatting the drive right now. So it looks like to me that everything is going to work as we had hoped to. And that the repair of this drive has been a success. Um, if you do have a lot of old hard drives lying around, um, I recommend you getting one of these USB 3 docking stations. They're easy to use. They're compatible with uh, even IDE uh, drives as well. Uh, some of them have the capability to plug in a laptop hard drive, which, yes, I think this one does from memory. And this one's even got a card reader at the front, and you can plug in other USB devices. But remember, if you do plug in more items to this, the slower your USB 3 uh, speeds will get to copy and, um, you know, install items on the hard drive. So I wouldn't recommend going and putting multiple drives in there at the one time. Um, there's a few different types. This is just one of them as a desktop version. And it comes with this nifty little, what is it? Three amp power supply. So 100 and so watts. Oh. And that wants to come sliding off the table like naturally. Here we go. So, it, I actually, no, it does come up with a percentage, so that is now sitting at 1%. <laughs> so this is going to take some time. It's probably going to take a good, at that rate, probably about three hours. So, uh, let's come back to it. So finally, after three and a half bloody hours, this thing has decided the format and it's come up as volume, new volume, drive H. So if we were to go into our file explorer now and go into drive H, it should be. Oh, it didn't come up. Okay, well, that is strange. Oh cannot be specified. Oh, okay. Well, we've got an issue here, guys. I'm going to sign in a new letter. See what happens. Sometimes this does happen. Here we go. Yeah, I had to change it to drive I for some reason. And suddenly the thing wants to work. So I don't know what glitch that was. But uh, let's see if we can copy a file over to it. Uh, now, it's not going to be the full SATA speed. Well, it might be actually. USB 3 is pretty fast. So we're going to copy that one and two videos of... Let's see how big these two videos are. 4.7 gigabytes. Well, that's enough to just test it out. So oh. let's drag that into here. And look at that. 100 and... 
10 megabytes per second so for USB 3 that's doing a reasonable speed I'm very happy with that we'll just make sure we can play that um, video back and if we can play that back we know that the uh, hard drive is working as it should we can also do a full scan disk to detect if there's any other further problems but there was no problems before this um, with the old um, setup so I believe that there shouldn't be any problems with this today I'm going to grab the other hard drive as well and uh, do a reformat on that one so I just double click this one and make sure get on YouTube it is uh so it appears to be working there we go and another one of my videos so um so everything seems to be fine what i might do now after i've finished formatting this drive is that in one of my next videos i'm going to be building up a computer that runs windows 7 and I don't want something too modern so I've elected to choose a computer I've got out the back which is a quad core 9550 an Intel quad core so I think having two rated one terabyte drives would be a good choice for that uh, system as we don't really it won't really gain much benefit of having solid state and I don't really want to spend money on it so having two terabytes rated We'll run at about well if you look at this it's running at 110 uh, megabytes per second so we should be getting about 180 out of having two drives in raid anyway you'll have to watch out for another video when i do that um before i go i want to add to that uh some people might say why don't you just buy a new hard drive for this old computer of yours well that's great but if you want to raid your hard drives, you must ensure that the two hard drives are the same model number and the same board numbers and everything is 100% the same on the two drives. Otherwise, you're going to run into troubles. That's, that's what I've been told many times over. And I did try it on two different brands of drives at one stage and it just didn't like it and caused a lot of errors and corruption. So... Uh, I would not try to run two different brands of drives as your um, rated drives. Anyway, this is uh, Wicked GQ Patrol, or Matt, over and out.